Welcome to the Optical Biochemist Laboratory. We are located at INRS, Quebec National Institute for Scientific Research, downtown Montreal. Today's hot talk is about a technology called network coding and its application in passive optical networks or PONs. But before we start speaking about the experiment, let me first show you how this technology is supposed to work in practice. The following example illustrates the potential of network coding to improve the throughput in current ponds. In this illustrative scenario, two packets are exchanged between two optical network units or ONUs. Owing to the pond's directional spitter combiner, ONUs may communicate only through the intermediary of the optical line terminal, OLT. In conventional ponds, such an exchange is usually performed in four separate packet transmissions, with the OLT receiving and then broadcasting each packet individually. With network coding, the OLT may code the received packets into a single packet using a simple bitwise exclusive OR or XOR operation. The XOR operation is denoted by this symbol. Upon receiving the coded packet, the ONUs decode the packets destined to them using a copy of their previously transmitted packets. Network coding hence achieves the packet exchange in only three packet transmissions, using 50% less downstream bandwidth than conventional pawns. Now in this small experiment, you only want to emulate the behavior you just saw of network coding in pawns. But before I speak about that, let me show you the First of all, this is the N2X. This is actually the control screen of the N2X. It has like an integrated computer, and this is the actual equipment. The second big piece of equipment is the EPOD, the Ethernet Passive Optical Network. Last but not least, the net of PGA equipment. The experimental setup works like this. The N2X produces two Ethernet packet streams. Those streams are fed to the encoder, which is implemented in our first 1 gigabit net of PGA unit, producing a single coded stream at the output. The coded stream is sent through the 20 km EPON, which is set to operate in promiscuous mode. The stream is broadcast from the OLT to two ONUs simultaneously. The ONUs send the coded stream to our second net FPGA unit, which implements the decoding process, thus reconstituting the two native streams and sending them back to the N2X for analysis. But what happens inside the net FPGAs? Well, each packet in the two native N2X streams carries a 20-byte test payload located right before the frame check sequence. If the NetFPGA finds packets from the two streams in its input queues, it converts them into a single packet carrying both test payloads. The coding header indicates the streams associated to each test payload. If, however, only one packet is sitting in the NetFPGA's input queues, it is transmitted uncoded rather than being delayed until an opportunity for coding arises. Note that this process of coding only when an opportunity arises is called opportunistic coding. Since the EPON is in promiscuous mode, the packets are broadcast from the OLT to both ONUs and done to the decoder. Finally, at each port of the decoder, the native packets belonging to each of the two and two X streams are reconstituted thanks to the information in the coding header. The N two X then proceeds to stream analysis. This is an emulation because the process of moving test payloads has replaced the actual XOR coding. This enables us to investigate some of the effects of network coding on the EPON's downstream transmission without having to implement any complex queue management and packet searching at the decoder side. Let's finish with a few experimental parameters. First, the N2X streams are continuous streams with a constant packet rate. Second, the packet size is fixed to 100 bytes. 
And finally, for each load point, the measurements are carried out for a duration of one minute. That allows more than 112 million packets to be injected into our setup at high loads. Great, now we're ready for the experiment. The N2X is configured correctly. The EPOD is working in promiscuous mode. The NetFPGA are ready with the bit file downloaded on the NetFPGA card. And as you can see, all the Ethernet cables are connected. So let's do it. Let me first demonstrate the advantages of network coding at a single high load. This is what the N2X display looks like before a measurement. The N2X real-time window in the left section displays a table containing the cumulative measurements of a number of packet statistics. The received throughput and the average packet delay are plotted in real time in the right section of the window for one of the two packet streams. This screen capture will show you the measurements without coding at the top of the screen and the results with opportunistic coding at the bottom of the screen simultaneously. Now let's start the experiment. Now as you see, the total input load for each stream is 750 megabit per second. Therefore the total load offered to the system is 1.5 gigabit per second. That is 50% above the EPON's physical layer downstream capacity. We can clearly see a remarkable difference between the two experiments. When no coding is applied, the received throughput is about half the input load. You can see that here. This indicates extreme packet losses. However, when coding is applied over here, the streams are received at their full input load. This means that coding allows the information rate carried by the EPON to be above its physical capacity. Now, looking at the delay statistics is even more significant. While delays without coding reach 1,000 microseconds, you can see that over here, with coding, they remain one order of magnitude below right above the 100 microsecond mark. You can see that over here. Now that is quite remarkable. But to get a better picture, let's do the same measurements for nine other load points. Well, let's look at the most significant results of our 10 load points, starting with throughput. As you can see, the load points go from 160 megabit per second to 1.6 gigabit per second. Without coding, the maximum throughput of our system under test is clearly around 780 megabit per second. With coding, however, this throughput exceeds 1.5 gigabit per second. Now here are the loss versus low statistics. As expected, Losses appear when the maximum capacities are reached. This happens at higher loads when network coding is used. This plot shows a remarkable feature of network coding, namely the capability for lossless operation far above the physical capacity of the system under test. Finally and most significantly, this plot shows average packet delay versus the offered load. We can see that in both the plotted scenarios, the average delay jumps by an, an order of magnitude as soon as the offered load hits the system's maximum throughput. With coding, this only happens at the highest load point, over here. The use of coding allows the average delay to remain close to the downstream propagation delay across the EPON, around 100 microseconds, even when the maximum capacity of the EPON is exceeded. Without coding, however, the delays quickly climb tenfold to around 1,100 microseconds. The reason for such behavior, as well as interesting insight into network coding in next generation pods, can be found in our upcoming publication. And that concludes this podcast. Thanks for watching. Bye.